ese pelire la sui montaña Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 e se pelire la sui montagna sotto l'ombra. Iraq is used when attempting questions in law exams. As a preliminary point, two questions need to be answered. First, what is Iraq? Second, what are problem questions? First, Iraq is an acronym with each letter representing a word. I stands for issues, R stands for rules or principles, A stands for application or analysis, and C stands for conclusion. Essentially, Iraq is like a map that a law student follows in answering a problem question. Issues mean the questions of law that you want to address. They are largely couched as questions and they use the interrogative word whether and you may say whether or not. They are the questions you want to provide answers to in your rules and in your application. Take for example if A pins B down and then forcefully have sex with her, your issue would be whether A is guilty of the offense of rape. Or you may say whether or not A has committed the offense of rape. What then are the rules? The rules, that is the heart simply mean the principles of law that govern the facts and the issues raised. This is usually the most lengthy part since it is where you talk so much about the law. It is important to state that the applicable rules must align with the issues raised. This should tell you as law students that your issues are not only informed by the facts of the case, but also by the rules. A law student that is not apprised of the relevant rules that are applicable to the facts would definitely raise the wrong issues. In the earlier example given, it can be seen that the issue raised as to rape is informed by the fact that we know that such an act touches on the offense of rape. On the whole, the rules part is where you talk about the law alongside your authorities. This is where you have to cite your cases as well as provisions from the statute or even the constitution. With respect to the question of rape in our earlier example, the relevant provisions that one may cite may have to do with the criminal code, the penal code, the criminal law of legal states, the violence against persons acts, and the sexual offense bill, alongside some other cases touching on the elements of the offense of rape. The next question then is, what do we mean by application or analysis? The application comes immediately after the roots, and then you must mark it off by a paragraph. Application simply means to apply the rules to the facts. There is a connection between the rules and the facts. Suffice to state that in the part of the rules, the student does not concern itself with the facts of that case, except that the facts may serve as a pathway in your thoughts, thereby informing your legal analysis. Aside this, the student doesn't need to state the names of the parties in the rules or even mention either elaborately or by way of passing reference any parts of the facts in the rules. This means that in our earlier example, 
when talking about the law in the part for the rules, you don't need to make mention of what A did or to even talk about A and B. In the part for the application, it is where the rules are then married with the facts. Take for example, the law on crime under the criminal code said that there is rape once a man has sexual intercourse with the lady without consent. The criminal code uses the term canal knowledge. In the rules, one would explain what this provision means. However, it is in the application that one tries to see if A in the above fact had actually had intercourse with a lady without consent. Seeing as it was already stated in the fact that he had sexual intercourse with B, then means that as far as penile penetration is concerned, that is settled. Similarly, the statute also provides that once there is penetration, the next question is whether there is consent in this particular case. This fact is straightforward by the fact that it states expressly that A used force on B, thereby suggesting that the sexual intercourse was had without consent. And this is where you then apply all your rules with the facts. The application marries the rules with the facts. The next question then is, what is a conclusion? A conclusion is where you pass or you give your verdict by either discharging or acquitting A of the offense or the allegation that has been preferred against him. This is where you state whether A is guilty of the offense of rape or not. Thus, it can be said that the conclusion has a connection to do with the issue. The issue is a question, then the conclusion is the answer to the question. The issue is whether A is guilty of rape or not. Then the conclusion is saying that upon considering the given fact and what the law says, that A is indeed guilty of the offense of rape. The second question then is, what is a problem question? Since Iraq is used to attempt a problem question. And this we shall then proceed to examine. A problem question, simply put, is only an hypothetical fact that tries to capture the position of the law. It is more of a story that is woven around the law. That is simply what a problem question is. A problem question can be seen as an hypothetical fact that tries to capture the law in, pra in practical interaction. It is a story of law and how law may be breached or not. When you see a problem question, you would know that it is a problem question. A problem question is so similar to the account that is given by a client to his solicitor. The client is not aware of any legal issue. A client is only concerned about what transpired between him and the other party. It is the duty of the lawyer to identify the legal issue, the applicable rules, and then apply them. And you are meant to act as if you were a solicitor. Hi, you're welcome back. Now that we have learned what Iraq means, it is pertinent that we now try to see how we can use Iraq to attempt a problem question. Now what you can see on the screen is a problem question. It's a unilag question on criminal law. 
And when you look at this, you see that it is more of a story. Mr. Ojo Ayesoro and Mrs. Bimbo Ayesoro live, you know, in Lagos states. They've done, they've been married for 10 years without any child. This is our story. So this is exactly how a problem question looks like. You see where I highlighted Mrs. Ayesoro held Cynthia, you know, by her ties and stripped her naked. Why Mr. Ayesoro proceeded to have intercourse with her. This is a story. And so, it is where you have the problem question. The first thing you want to do is to read the facts. Now, when you're reading the facts, you need to understand that some facts are very pertinent. They are pertinent in the sense that those particular parts of the facts would lead you to be able to determine what area of law uh, this particular question is. And I have highlighted some of the relevant facts. So if you see, it's a Mr. Ojo, um, Ayesh Soro, and Mrs. Bimbo Ayesh Soro, who live in Lagos State, have been married for 10 years without a child. The reason why I highlighted this is because when time you see in a criminal law question that they mention a state, you, you need to be very careful uh, because you find that the criminal law of a particular state may be different from the criminal code. And if a state has been mentioned, it then means that you need to pay attention to a particular provision in that of the state. So we have the criminal law of Lagos State. We used to have that of 2011, but the current law is the criminal law of Lagos State of 2015. And that is the reason why I highlighted this. You see Lagos State, you pay attention that there may be a point where the criminal law provision, the criminal code's provisions and the provisions of uh, the criminal law of Lagos State may differ. And as such, you have to apply that, uh, that align with the provisions of the criminal law of Lagos State. Now, the next part is said is Mrs. Bimba Isuro counseled her husband, counseled her husband, Mr. to have intercourse with Cynthia, that 22 year old born again Christian housemaid. So, you see that the woman was the one who counseled her husband. So, this may be leading you to the thought of perhaps a conspiracy or so. Now, Mr. Mr. Ojo then proposed to Cynthia to have intercourse with Cynthia, that 22 year old. Then he proposed to Cynthia to have intercourse with her, but then Cynthia refused bluntly on ground that she did not want to compromise her eternity. She refused, which means that she didn't give consent. Thereafter, Mr. and Mrs. Ayeshiro agreed to force Cynthia against her wish in the night when she would not be able to escape. Anytime you see the word agreed, agreement in a criminal law question, you may want to pay attention to see whether the offense of conspiracy uh, has been committed. And that is the reason why I also highlighted, so highlighted that. And you see that uh, Mrs. Ayeso held Cynthia's ties and stripped her naked. So if they held her ties and stripped her naked, why Mr. Ayeso proceeded to have intercourse? He had intercourse. So which means there was penetration, right, with her. And remember, she was stripped naked to suggest that there was force. So after much struggle, Ms. Isu was unable to get Cynthia's hymen ruptured because of her virginity and as such, it could not ejaculate. Now you want to pay attention to this part to see whether the fact that it was not able to get her hymen ruptured, whether that could actually have any impact on the question whether he's guilty of the offense of rape. Now this is the fact. The next thing you want to do is to look at the question. The question asks you to consider the criminal liability of you know Ojo Aishiro, Mrs. Bimba Aishiro, and then it asks that would your answer be different if Mr. and Mrs. Aishiro had penetrated Cynthia instead with his fingers, that is if, uh, if he had done it with his fingers and not his penis. It also says, would your answer be different if Cynthia is a 15-year-old girl and had consented to the intercourse? So you want to provide answers to all of this. Now, to provide answers to the first and second one, then you have to raise issues that border on your own perceived uh, crime or offense that both parties have committed, that is, Mr. and Mrs. Aesiro. So this is the answer plan. Um, this is the answer plan. I said, first, you must understand that it's a problem question, and so you are required to 
employ the popular IRAC. However, you must exercise caution in using IRAC in the traditional way, as this question has its own peculiar features. One of the things you should bear in mind is that it is the questions below that will determine how to frame your issues. Also, you must know that you must not you might not necessarily need to frame issues for Roman numerals three and four respectively as they may be answered directly. I already stated that. that. So secondly, you must take note of the fact that the fact reveals that the event took place in Lagos and act accordingly by having regards to the criminal law of Lagos State as there must be one or two questions that would require you to apply the said code as against the criminal code. You must take note of the fact that the age of the plaintiff is mentioned and there is a question where it is assumed the age is different. This is to tell you that the age is very important and you must take note of it. Thirdly, this question clearly borders on the offenses of rape, conspiracy and parties to offense, if any. Thus, you must avert your mind to the fact that if you want to successfully answer a criminal law question, you must prove all the elements of an offense. In essence, you have to interrogate all the elements of the offense of rape before concluding whether the offense has been committed or not. This is very important as it, is not, as it not only aligns with conventional legal practices but also reflects the dispositions of our lecturers. So, um, I've said everything. Now, how do you answer? The first thing you want to do is you want to raise your issue. Now, how do you raise your issue? You see that there is more of an introductory um, expression so to say say the issues are rising for legal determination issues are rising for legal determination one whether mr ojo are um, is guilty of the offense of rape secondly is whether mrs ayesoro is guilty of the offense of conspiracy and is a party to the offense of rape now why is it that i didn't raise the issue as to whether mrs ayesoro is guilty of the offense of rape it is because i am aware that under the criminal code and under the criminal law of legal state, a woman cannot be guilty of the offense of rape. But she can be guilty of the offense of party as a party to offense or offense of conspiracy. So I have raised issue along with that aspect of law that I believe applies to her. But Mr. Ayesuru can be guilty of the offense of rape and thus I raised issue. So you can see what I was saying earlier about the fact that when you want to raise your issue, it must also align with your rules because your rules will dictate your issue. Now, after you have raised all the issues, you need to understand that it is better that you raise issues like this because there are times that lecturers could have allotted mark to every issue. Lecturers could have allotted mark to every issue in the sense that if you raise one issue, lecturer could have said, okay, maybe half, half mark. So when you raise it like that, you get your half, uh, half, half mark for each issue that's well. You raise now that is that so you could have four or five you know issues like that now the next thing is this you now pick each issue and then address each issue now you see uh, personally I love to you know write my issue down like this and then on the line yes even with my red pen uh, at times I take um, a ruler because I just want a very neat work uh, you know work that looks appealing to the examiner now you see this is my rule. That's I like that place. This place I highlighted the yellow part. Yeah, the rule starts from here. And when you see it, offense of rape. I want to talk about the offense of rape. And I said rape is a criminal offense in Nigeria by virtue of the provisions of section three five seven of the criminal code. Do you see directly? This is more of my topic sentence. I just go in there. I started to cite you know provisions of uh, the law. That is authorities. I told you is your rule. That is where you cite, um, you know, the provisions, maybe case laws or even statutory provisions. And they said, in the light of the above, Section 6 is, defines canon knowledge to mean that the offense is completed upon penetration. Now, like I stated, you know, I'm still trying to give, you know, an introduction at this point. And then um, I also spoke about the fact that the requirement of penetration is indispensable. And that it is not necessary to actually prove that the Ayman was ruptured. And you see, I said in Ar and Kufi, in Ar and Kufi, it was held that there cannot be rape without penetration. I said similarly, the court in Okuyomo and the state committed a conviction for rape to attempted rape because there was no evidence of penetration. In the case of Ar versus Seidu, the accused was charged with the defilement of a girl under the age of 
11 years. The girl was found sitting on the laps of the accused who was wiping a tie with a cloth. The accused identified the clothes as his and it was found to contain human semen. On examination of the girl's private part, human semen was found but no blood. The doctor could not, I was just giving the fact to show that, uh, you know, you don't actually need to get the hymen ruptured to be convicted for the offense of rape. So I said, furthermore, it is a clear principle of law that the slightest penetration is sufficient. And I cited the case of Oguma here in the States, cited section 208, subsection 4 of criminal law of legal state. And now, after having said that, now I need you to pay attention to this place where I said, with regards to the instant case. Yes, I remember that I stated that in your rules, you don't need to concern yourself with the fact in the sense that you don't need to start applying. You can concern yourself in application. But then you need to understand that for criminal law, for criminal law questions, your rules and your facts, they go hand in hand. The reason is that you want to address each element of the offense and you want to decide whether it has been proved. So if there are three elements of an offense, you say that, okay, this first one, this has been established. The second one has been established. The third one has been established. So, and you can only do that by applying. And that is the reason why in this aspect I said with regards to the instant case, okay, see with regard to the instant case, you can see here I was simply applying. I'm going to do is also part of the rule. So I said with regard to the instant case that has been stated expressly that Mr. Isro had in the course with Cynthia, which suggests that there was penetration and his inability to get an hymen rupture does not suggest otherwise. You know, I've already stated the rule, so I'm only applying it. And I said, sequel to this is submitted that the element of penetration has been satisfied. I'm saying that I've already proved that there was penetration in this case. So I said, flowing from the provisions of section 357 uh, uh, criminal code for an offense of rape to be committed, there must have been lack of consent. You can see I'm now proceeding to another element of the offense of rape. And on the issue of consent, say consent obtained by force is no consent. Try you so you try to explain all those uh, assumed cons uh, consent are actually not consent. See the case of R and Higgins, where the court said uh, uh, that if there was any form of exhaustion after struggle and resistance, no consent. In case of R and later, the court said it was rape to have intercourse with a girl who appeared to be sleeping. So this is to show you that we don't need to actually. And which I may be restricted by force because someone that is sleeping will not be able to restrict by force. And you see the case of Iguamugu and the state. Now, the accused, I gave the fact of this case because it is a case that clearly shows how someone raped, you know, a schoolmate, he tore her dress and pants, which were clear evidence of force. The court held that the girl's submission was to save her from further invasion. Yeah, I'm just simply showing you a case where somebody initially resisted. Uh, you know, by force, and later, later, I had to submit because she was, you know, tired and all. Oh, and the court said that was no consent. You understand? And so, in the case of R and Doyle, uh, well, well, just cited this also to, you know, move on. I cited R and Ulubuja. Well, you don't really need to cite other cases. As long as you cited at least, let's say, two cases or three cases, and you have cited those cases that are very relevant, I believe you are good to go now um, if you look at where i highlighted i said in light of the instant case you see it can be seen that since i never gave a consent i'm applying i'm applying what the law says i said because the law says there must be uh, consent now the question is in this case was there consent i'm not saying that it can be seen that since i never gave a consent why the fact already reviews that she rejected the gesture initially uh, when it was first brought to her notice and that she was hoodwinked by mrs ayoshiro to come clean the room most importantly, the fact that Mrs. Ayesero held her by her ties and stripped her naked shows that force had been applied on her. Yes, because if not, why would you hold her and pin her down? So, and say, flowing from this, it is certain that there was no consent. You could see, I applied, and I, I'm saying that I've already established toward this. Now, after I've been able to establish the two elements of uh, uh, the offense of rape, and I found that the, the fact disclosed these two, uh, the fact disclosed these two elements. Then it is more or less saying that, yes, Mr. Ayushiro is guilty of the offense of rape. So I said, I've been interrogated. Yeah, this is then your conclusion. So this part is where the conclusion starts from 
want to decide. So I said, having irrogated the elements of the offense of rape and having established that there was penetration and that there was lack of consent, it is submitted that the offense of rape as enshrined in the code has been established and that Mr. Yushiro is guilty of the offense of rape. Now, um, the second issue, we can see brought it out, underlined whether Mr. Yushiro is guilty of the offense of conspiracy and is a party to the offense of rape. So, I, you know, I want to talk about conspiracy and, you know, what parties to offense mean. So I said, where two or more persons agree to carry out some unlawful act or to do a lawful act, by lawful means, and then I start citing cases, Magia Kodumi and R, Injovins and the state, Poso and the state, R and Kinsoya. I said, the BS restating, second paragraph, okay, second paragraph, BS restating that where the only parties to the agreement are husband and wife. Okay, before I talk about the second paragraph, you could see that I also applied this year too because it's a criminal law question from here to this uh, part. I mean, I like this. I also I said it here. said in light of the instant case, it is submitted that there was an agreement between the husband and wife to rape Cynthia in the hope that she would be bestowed with the fruit of the womb and assuage the fear of the wife who could not have an issue. So I'm saying that there was an agreement. So the moment there was an agreement, that is what the law says, an agreement to do an unlawful act or to do a lawful act in an unlawful manner. It's conspiracy. So I'm saying that they are guilty of conspiracy. But I have not decided that because why? Both of them are husbands and wife. And if you have read, you would understand that that plays a very important role in uh, deciding whether they are to be convicted or uh, they are to be acquitted. So I said, the bear is stating that where the only parties to the agreement are husband and wife, there is no conspiracy if the marriage is a Christian marriage. Yes, it's a Christian marriage. So the question is, oh, so perhaps the wife cannot be liable for the offense of conspiracy. And you can see section 34 of uh, the CC. Now you can see the way I've written, uh, you know, criminal code, basically CC. And then I wrote section here that is um, SEC, but you don't need it you have to just you could just write s but if you're writing section make sure that the s is in capital letter s you get so i said that is where uh, the, uh, the code provides for it but however however yes this is very important once you see something like this it's telling you that don't be so quick to make that judgment a husband and wife can be convicted of conspiracy where a third party is involved or where the agreement was entered into before the marriage. So, even though the law says no conspiracy between husband and wife, but if a third party is involved or the agreement was entered into before the marriage, then it can be conspiracy. So, I gave cases, emoji and R, R and trust name, and then you see all that. But then what is very important here is from this part, which you can see here, I will just put this here and then I light this as well. So you see, said where it says that what it is, I said it is pertinent to then note that this provision has been expunged from the criminal law of Lagos State. So which means that provision is not a criminal law of Lagos State. Now you see that I wrote criminal law of Lagos State. Initially I've been putting CLLS, you may just continue writing CLLS. Hence, under the Lagos law, your husband and wife can be guilty of the offense. Of rape, you see, under the criminal code, the husband and wife cannot be guilty of uh, the offense of conspiracy, but then, yeah, both of them can be guilty of conspiracy under the Lagos law. That is why I told you that immediately you see the state, you should pay attention to it. So, now I applied, I said the fact of the instant case, that's why I'm applying it, reveals that the couple both stay in Lagos and that the offense took place in Lagos, thus, it is submitted that section 30. 4CC cannot avail Mrs. or I sorrow. So, which means uh, they can still be conspiracy. Now, it is a cornerstone of the offense of conspiracy that the agreement must be to carry out an unlawful act. Yeah, that's another element. It's not just agreement, but there must be one to carry an unlawful act or to carry out a lawful act by unlawful means. I cited the case. But what is important here is where I'm also applying. And here I applied and I said, let me also highlight this so you could also. Get to see it clearly. So submitted that what the couple agreed to do 
in this case and did do is an offense as it is a rape yes so which means they both agree to commit a crime to do it and that is why i say agreement must be to carry out an unlawful act as there was an agreement to commit the offense of rape so uh, basically establishing all the elements and meanwhile even though it is generally the law that a woman cannot be guilty of an offense of rape it is submitted that the woman the woman may be held liable as a party to the offense under section 7 so this was initiated in Aaron Ram, and you can see that. It's so, what's also further important here is that I'm not applying here to. Yeah, I said flowing from this. You can see the way I have been using words to say that. Okay, I'm applying. You know, I'm applying because I'm more or less still making reference to the rule. And I told you, uh, application is all about the rule and the fact. You carry the rule. You marry it with uh, the fact. So once I have said so much uh, about the rule, I now say that okay, well, going by all I've said about the rule, and then looking at the fact, and that is where you see that, and I start mentioning the names of the parties in the fact. So flowing from this, submitted that Mrs. Ayesoro is guilty as a party to an offence, having established that Mrs. Ayesoro had an agreement to commit an unlawful act and did and did commit it. She's also guilty of the offence of conspiracy and as a party to the offence. So I've been able to dispose of these issues, two issues. Now the question, the third question was whether my answer would have uh, been, you know, be different if it had been that Mrs. Uh, Mr. Yosuru did not penetrate with his penis, if he had used another thing. And I said yes, that my answer would have been different. Why? Because Mr. Yosuru would not have been guilty of the offence of rape. Because I stated it in the rule that for there to be offense of rape, there must be penile penetration, that is the penis that was being inserted. So since it was not the penis, I'm now saying that you cannot be guilty of the offense of rape. That is, my answer would have changed if it had been that I didn't use penis. So as a consequence upon this, it is not in dispute that the incident took place in Lagos as revealed by the fact of this case. You will be liable for sexual offence by penetration. Yes, under the Lagos law, we have what is called sexual offence by penetration. We don't have it under the criminal code. But the reason why you have to mention this is because the offence took place in Lagos. You do understand. So, focus is more on the criminal law of Lagos than that of the criminal code. So, I said, as a result of that, you will not be guilty of the offence of rape or sexual offence by penetration. And if you see, I also say it is further submitted. Yeah, you also need to understand. It is submitted. It's... <laughs> That is an expression that you want to get yourself familiar with. So it is further submitted that Mrs. Ayesoro would be guilty of the offense of conspiracy. Yes, she will be guilty of the offense of conspiracy, but it's not conspiracy to commit the offense of rape now because there is no rape. But it will not be the conspiracy to sexually assault Cynthia. Since there was no intention to commit the offense of rape, like I'm saying that where he didn't have penile penetration. In the same connection, she will be liable for being a party to the offense of sexual offense by penetration. So, that is that. Then the next question was, oh, it was about Cynthia not being uh, up to, you know, Cynthia not being up to 22 years, like you said. So, I said, the standard principle of law is that an offense to so have been, uh, you know, have unlawful canon knowledge of a girl that is below 16 years. So, if the person is below 16 years, you have Kind of knowledge with that person, then you will also be what, guilty of a misdemeanor. And flowing from this, I see flowing from this, an expression that I love to use a lot because it basically tells you that okay, I've been saying something, I want to say a new thing, but I want to merge both together. Flowing from this, no doubt that my answer would have been different, and Mr. Ishiro would have been guilty of the offense of indecent assault as there would have been penetration. And the consent of supposedly 15 year old Cynthia would have been invalid even if she willingly gives that consent without any force or pressure exerted on her. So, if you even if she gave her consent, you know, cons uh, consent is not one that is valid in uh, law. And so, that is that for how to answer you know, criminal law question using Iraq. I hope you have been able to learn one or two things today. And I hope you can then attempt questions. So this is a problem question. Uh, now, this is an example of uh, an essay question I just said to show you. You can see this one is no story. More if you want to write a paper, uh, you know, on this. Another day we'll look at this.
don't forget my name has not changed and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and other days we are going to also look at the law of thoughts and maybe constitutional law and different other you know courses and this question and answer series thank you